Hello, Patrick Walchuk here, and we're making our movies for the month of June for the investment property business in Ottawa, and I'll call this just some odds and ends, or things that happened to me or that happened in the market uh, during this month. So getting right into it, there's four quick things. Number one, it was announced that the maximum increase a landlord can put on a property for 2023 is 2.5%. You may be aware that currently it's 1.2%. Now, the inflation rate in May was 7.7%, 7.7. The maximum you can increase next year, 2.5. Go figure. Um, I won't say any more about that. Um, number two, I had an investor call me on a multi-unit property that we had listed for sale and he asked, um, can I purchase a property but not inherit the property management company? And the quick answer is yes, absolutely. So if I represent a buyer and they want to do that, we just simply make a provision in the agreement of purchase and sale that the uh, buyer assumes uh, no contracts or oral or written of any sort regarding the purchase of the property. And you can be specific, uh, anything from you're not going to inherit the hot water tank lease to the property manager, whatever, you can put what Whatever you want into the uh, offer and as long as it's agreed to yes you certainly can do that okay number three <clears throat> I had another investor call me on a different property that we had for sale and <clears throat> he wanted to know why I keep saying you need to have 35% down payment on a multi-unit property because he had 20% down payment and that's all CMHC says that you need so I had to explain to him the, the process of the theory versus the real world. So a lender who is the bank can require whatever amount of money they want. CMHC has a requirement that the minimum is 20%. So a bank wants to make sure there's enough of a down payment so that you're looking at a positive cash flow because if you're not then the bank is afraid that you're going to default on your mortgage. So that's the difference. The bank lends the money, they're risk adverse, CMHC ensures it, and CMHC has their own requirements as well. Now, again, the person didn't understand the difference between the theory and the reality of the, the bank lending money. So if I had said to him, hey, no problem, I'll submit the offer, the offer would have failed, and this is what, what the outcome what, what would have been. We would make a conditional offer upon him being able to obtain financing. As I said, it, it would have failed, the buyer would then have been out some, some costs. For example, the cost of having an appraisal done and the seller, they would have been out the marketing time of the property because let's say it was off the market for two weeks or four months while well, this buyer was trying to arrange financing and then we know they wouldn't have gotten the financing and so the property would have come back onto the market and the seller would have lost all that valuable marketing time. So I really got to stress 20% it, it ain't going to work on a property, a multi-unit building in Ottawa. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is a thing called a DCR or a debt coverage ratio, sometimes referred to as a debt service coverage ratio. And we encountered this um, just this month on, on, on a building. Now, this is a requirement that a lender or CM, sorry, CMHC might have on, on a property. Now, DCR, debt coverage ratio, is the ratio between the property's net operating income and its annual debt service, or the annual amount of mortgage that, that you pay. Now, for example, when you calculate your NOI, you know, you go through uh, vacancy and bad debt and maintenance and management and utility costs and all that stuff, and you got a true NOI, what the lender or the insurer like CMAC wants to see is that for every $1 of expenses, you have $1.20 coming in, as an example. So what you'll see is a DCR of 1 to 1.2, okay, so a dollar in expenses going out, a dollar twenty coming in. That way, they know you can afford to keep the property. Um, now, we had a case again this month where the buyer assumed the mortgage. The mortgagee said, "Yeah, cool. We'll, we'll we'll take you on. You got good credit." So then it just had to go to CMHC, and CMHC said, "Not cool." it doesn't meet our DCR requirements. 
So then we were in a bit of a conundrum and we got some financial advice from some really smart people and uh, we were able to make it happen. But that's a DCR, okay? If you have any questions about any of these topics, give me a shout. Thank you.